Hi. Today, we're actually going to talk about early period garb and some other little bit of information to use for making your costumes or garb as we call it. Uh, look, Bronze Age, uh, specifically we're looking at like uh, early Celtic, um, almost ne uh, Neolithic age. But we'll start with the fabrics. What's a good fabric to get? It's quite usually a question we get. Um, I like to use, call it a 10 foot rule. If it looks period 10 feet, it works. But if you want to get a little more in depth with that, what you're looking for is, this is actually a wool weave. And uh, if I get a little bit closer, you can see the weave pattern in it. Here's another piece of fabric here that is a piece of garb, which is a cotton one. This one's been around for a while, so it's, it's worn and its colors are kind of fading. Probably been using this one for about more than a decade. But the trick to a period fabric is within a square inch is uh, 40 threads or less in either direction. And that gives the appearance of a period fabric. Here's another good example of the fabric to use. Most of the uh, colors are actually earth tones. Um, they were easier to come by. Bright colors weren't really around yet. Um, sometimes you had red, pigments of red, some ochre, and some other uh, colors that were very easy to get naturally, but uh, they didn't stay long. They would actually fade out. So natural colors are, are pretty much the best thing to do and get. Now, if you do not have access to finding cloth that is woven or wool, sometimes you can find uh, flannels, just cheap cotton flannels that'll work. Um, they're, they're soft, they're cotton, they breathe, and on top of that, they're inexpensive. And uh, you can use the same patterns that we do to uh, make clothing. Um, I have my daughters over here, and uh, they're going to be giving me a bit of an assistance here in a second or two. And uh, we'll show you a basic pattern, and then uh, um, show you what it looks like when it's on a person, and some ways to decorate up your early period garb. Hi, we're back, and what I have here is basically what I wear. <coughs> Excuse me. It is a uh, rectangle of fabric. I'm going to show the sides a bit. There's an armhole, and then there is a seam down the side to about, for me, it, it comes just above my knee. And uh, it's similar to what she's wearing right now and to what she's wearing. Now the big difference between male clothing and female clothing was really wasn't that much of a difference except for length. The women's clothing was generally a little bit longer. Um, what this is is a square or a fabric piece of fabric, or sorry, a rectangle piece of fabric. I fold it in half, cut out a neck hole, and uh, seam down the sides, leaving holes for the arms and the legs. We're gonna have Janiah go ahead and slip into this real quick. Help your sister get into that real quick. Most of the clothing was worn in layers. You'd have a longer layer un underneath, which was a, a usually a general lighter, like uh, well, we we can use cotton if you want, but they would use different materials to weave the fabrics, even of a, a lighter wool, and then you would just layer it and have a heavier layer on top, just like that. Put your arms out, and as you can see, it's generally it's a box, but when you lay your arms down, it creates natural sleeves and. The larger the garment was, the more if it was uh, gathered at the waist, the more longer sleeves you'd have. So we're going to have Jonquil go over to the, my bunk back here and grab the leather belt and that woven one. Okay. Now Janiah is going to put on the, the leather belt and Jonquil is going to tie on the woven one. Now once you put the uh, fabric on, and belt it, it creates a natural form. And you can use pretty much anything. You can use a rope. Um, this is actually woven, uh, what, t-shirt material that we had left over. We'll probably end up doing a little bit of dyeing or something like that just to give the appearance of being aged. And this over here is a leather belt that she's having a little bit of difficulty with. <laughs> oh, it's, it's Jonquil's belt. Well, Go ahead and put that belt on. Let's switch real quick. 
Janiah walk back there and grab the uh, your the, the leather wraps. Once Jonquil has that belt on, you can get the leather wraps going. Um, once we get into the uh, the clothing, you know, different layers, we'll just take some bits and pieces of uh, leather leather waist wraps. Go ahead, and swing that one around yourself, Janiah, and help her put that one on. And it's just tucked over like a towel. And then uh, we will put a larger belt around it to hold the thing up. Uh, some people joke around, they call these barbarian diapers and some other, you know, weird names for them. But they were basically aprons. Um, once the nice thing about the aprons is they will keep your your clothing you know that much cleaner. They're utilitarian, so you know I've had this thing around for oh geez close to 15 years. It's broken in just like you know normal deer skins. They they will age and uh, you know turn a little bit darker with use. But you know I wipe my hands on it. It makes a great thing to uh, turn around and spin around real quick. Once you get you buckled in. You can just sit down onto the ground. Don't have to worry about you know getting your cloth dirty, dirty, and um, it keeps you clean. It's like I say, it's an apron, but it was a, it was a very useful thing. Um, some of the documentation I found on these was in the Germanicus Tacticus uh, when uh, Caesar was actually visiting the early Germans, and uh, they wrote about this on some of their styles of dress. Once you've uh, established you know your your clothing. In that that function, um, it's up to you to basically add more bling to things. One of the things like we like to do is like the shoulder wrap right there. It's just a extra piece of leather if it's getting cool. Just throw it over your shoulders. You can even actually bring it up over top of your head like a hood and wear it just like that. Uh, if it gets a little bit colder, now this is a fox fur, not fox as in fox, but as in fake. Faux, so faux fur. Uh, this will go on the shoulders, and she can wrap that around, and uh, this will keep you warm at night. But uh, I like generally using real furs. But go ahead, and take a slow spin. There it is. That's that's basic clothing. Um, it's a square box. Some of them are a little bit longer. Go ahead, grab that one over there. And uh, Janaya, take the fur, or I mean the leather, and pull that for yourself. And just open that one up, grab it by the shoulders. This is an old piece of fabric that uh, has been used for garb for a long time. You can see the length on this one. This one was actually uh, my wife's, and she, she would wear this. And uh, went down basically to her ankles. And she, again, she wears it in layers. And uh, it, it works. It's simple clothing. Um, and it's just how you did it. <laughs> it's an easy way to do it. So take a look at these. Hopefully this video will help. Um, help you understand you know, a little bit about the materials we use. A little bit about the um, different uh, types of garb. Um, we will get back to you shortly. Say bye, girls.